Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we have a very special guest who comes from Iran. Now I want him to introduce himself to us. So, hello, my name is Arti. I'm from Iran. So glad to be here with you today. Uh, I born in Shiraz, one of the most beautiful city in Iran. Since the YouTube channel is about language learning, I would like to ask my dear friend about his language learning experience. So, uh, tell me please, Artin, how many languages do you know? Uh, I know four languages. Uh, Persian as my native language, and uh, English, Arabic, and Russian. And uh, which one was the easiest one? So, the easiest one absolutely is native language for each person. But uh, I don't think Persian is also so easy. I think English is more uh, simple than Persian as well. And speaking about the most difficult among them? Among them, uh, I think Arabic and then Russian. All, both of them so difficult. Uh -huh. And uh, what do you find difficult in Russian? Oh, in Russian, uh, there is some difficulties in grammars. Uh, for example, uh, in Russian, whole things in one sentence uh, changing continuously when uh, talk about uh, for example I don't know for example, an adjective adjective always change by the name and by the verb and in different situations we have different kind of combinations so it's hard to understand when and where and what time uh, we should change the perfix or suffix of the, uh, the verb or the name or the adjectives and all of them come uh, co like it, they relate to each other, and this is for for me is uh, one, so one of the most uh, difficult points in Russian language. Okay, okay, thank you. And speaking about uh, the complexity of uh, Arabic, what can you say? So Arabic, I think, is something else. Uh, in Arabic, uh, so I can say an example. Uh, for example, in Russian, we have three genders. Uh, but in Arabic we have two genders, but uh, in Russian we have two, for example, we have sing singles and plural. But in Arabic we have three kind of things. We have a single and uh, a situation for just two person or two things, and a situation for more than two things or uh, two persons. So it means we have three different situations. And also we have three different pronouns. For example, a sixth situation for a, a people or I don't know for things that uh, they are not here right now and we are want to talk about them. Uh, and six again, six another situation for a person or a things that are existing right now. And uh, two other situation for pronouns I mean uh, that like I and we and all of them people just. Uh, at all of them, each other, we have 14 different situations, 14 different pronouns, but in Russian we have just six. So this this case is so difficult in Arabic. As far as in uh, Russian we have just six cases, but in Arabic we have 14 cases. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, another another question that I also would like to ask you: um, How has been language learning affected? your life? Oh, my life. Good question. Uh, you know, when you know other language uh, except your native language, it helps you to know so many things, such as culture, such as the way that people try to think, and the, the things that you can talk with other nations, that it means all of us are uh, united to each other, just we know, we, we want, we, we need to know the language to have conversation with each other to share our ideas to share our beliefs now Artin I would like to um, talk to you about your travel experience for example nowadays people uh, learn a foreign language for a travel sake and uh, uh, what about you why did you start uh, learning a new language what was the reason of it so I think for English we don't have maybe you know, nowadays uh, so many people they are 
try to learn one one international language for communication and I think French, English and Spanish one of the, they are the most popular ones among other languages and uh, when I was six or seven I started to learn English but about the Arabic I was interested uh, in Arabic language because it's one of the widest uh, language in the world and uh, when, when you when you can talk and uh, learn Arabic I mean when you can talk Arabic or learn Arabic you can uh, communicate with more than 33 or 400 million people in the world but Russian uh, something else uh, I came here in Russia about three years ago and I started to uh, learn the culture of Russian people and for this I wanted to learn Russian language and it was interesting for me okay okay and speaking about your travel experience how many countries have you visited uh, I think about more than five or six countries I visited mm -hmm. uh, was there something uh, that impressed you while you were traveling uh, for example in case of Russia what impressed you <laughs> Russia is something else I think because when you travel to Russia you travel to half of the world and it's uh, the biggest country in the world and it contains uh, so um, it contains so many um, different cultures and uh, when you travel for example to the Far East or when you travel to Peterburg or when you travel to some other uh, cities you see different kind of people different cultures but all of them united in one country and it's interesting okay and how many places have you visited in Russia in Russia I'm not sure but I think more than 10 12 cities in Russia I visited from yeah. far east Vladivostok to St. Petersburg the north west uh -huh. okay and you also travel to the south of Russia, right? Yes. To the North Caucasus, yeah. right? Okay. So now, Artin, I would like to talk to you about my uh, home region, my motherland. I mean, uh, the Republic of North Ossetia, Elenia. Uh, and uh, the first question that I would like to ask you is the following one. Uh, how did you happen to come here? Uh -huh. uh, I came here about uh, I think three years ago and uh, I, I had some friends here I got familiar with them in Moscow and they invited me here in Vladikavkaz I came here and I love I got love in this city and it's so interesting for me this city okay. especially the culture of the people okay and speaking about, uh, I don't know, some similarities that you can find uh, here in Ossetia and in Iran, what are they? Uh, I think uh, the culture here uh, is so similar to the culture of uh, Iranian people. As an example, here people uh, see you as a guest and when you are their guest, they, they do everything for you. They respect you, invite you and I don't know. It's like like Iranian people, especially. They love guests, and uh, this is so interesting for me. It's so similar to each other. And the relation between and the neighbors also is so similar to the uh, Iranian culture, and you cannot uh, find this kind of culture in other part of Russia. The neighbors are like their family. Speaking about the language, we know that uh, Ascetic is an Iranian language, it's an Iranic language. And uh, before coming here, did you know that uh, you can find, for example, somewhere in Russia, uh, people that could speak uh, an Iranian language and uh, this speaking uh, might be uh, familiar to you? Unfortunately, no. Uh, first time when I came here I got shocked that people can uh, talk in, per in, in one branch of Iranian language and uh, when, when they started to talk in their own language, I mean the Ossetian language, 
I got so many familiar words in their language. It was interesting for me. Okay, okay. And speaking about uh, these similarities, uh, what words come uh, to your mind? So, for example, uh, the basic numbers from uh -huh. 1 to 10, when we want to, when we have started to count them, for example, in Persian we say uh, 1 as yek, and in Ossetian? Uh, we say iu, do, uh, dua, se, erta, chahar, sibbar, panj, fons, shesh, khshash, haft, avd, hasht, asht, no, farasht, da, dash. So simple. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, so many other words, for example, moon. We, we, are, uh, we say moon as ma. And uh, in ascetic we say may. So, so many other words as well. Uh, and for example, parts of the body. Uh, yeah. Let's take hand, right? Yeah. So how do you say hand in uh, Persian? In Persian we say sab. And in ascetic we say uh, sar or sar. Uh, for example, in Tigorian dialect. And in, and in Kudarian uh, they also say sar. And ears? We say gush. And we say gush. Dandan, tus. Dandag. So similar. When I started to uh, study the, the history of uh, Ossetian language, I found it that Ossetian languages uh, come from Pashto. And the, I mean, like, uh, because Persian, Iranian language, or Persian, it's, uh, had, it has two branches yes. Pashto and Dari. We, we are talking as Persian, as Iranian people in Dari and Ossetian, uh, they are talking Persian Pashto. Well, you know, the system of Iranian languages, uh, they, uh, they truly are divided into two parts, uh, the Western uh, group of languages and the Eastern, Eastern. group of Eastern. languages. And, uh, for example, Persian, it uh, belongs to the Western group and ascetic belongs to the eastern group yeah. well our team thank you very much for having agreed to uh take part in this interview it was very interesting well i think it would be interesting for our viewers and i hope to uh, see you next time i hope you'll join us next time what do you think sure uh, thank you for your invitation uh, it was uh, so interesting for me as well and uh, I hope to, jo to um, join you next time in different terms maybe I don't know. Okay. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you.